I've been saying this, Vlad, for a while. I think the Dolphins, if Tua stays healthy, that's always if, they have the, what it takes to not only win the AFC East, but to go all the way to the Super Bowl. When you get in the Super Bowl, anything can happen. We've seen that before. I think they got what it takes. But I'm not the only person in the world that's coming around on the Dolphins. Seems like some of the talking heads on FS1, ESPN, they're all jumping in. The most recent person to jump on the Dolphins bandwagon is ESPN's own Courtney Cronin. We saw what they were like last year without him, those four games that he missed because of concussions. And this was still a top six offense, a team that got nine wins last season and made it all the way to the wild card round where they ended up losing. If he's healthy, imagine what all of these pieces look like. And if you can think about other things that they might add into the mix here, Dalvin Cook, and you take the 25th rushing offense last year and you instantly get an upgrade there. All of these pieces I'm talking about are on the offensive side of the ball. I haven't even mentioned Vic Fangio, the most influential defensive coordinator in this era of the NFL, bringing his talents to that side of the ball, a, a defense that now has Jalen Ramsey in the mix. They might be the most complete team in the AFC from top to bottom, assuming Tua can stay healthy. Of course, the quarterback is very much at the, at the crux of all of this, and we're all waiting to see if the jujitsu training, if all the things he's been doing this offseason lead the Dolphins down the path they want to go in the AFC. But I can't find another team that can boast the type of weapons that the Dolphins offense has. When you've got speed on the outside, Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill, when you have an offensive line that surely fortified itself in a big way last year when they got Teron, Teron Armstead in free agency. All of those pieces are back. We know that they're going to try to upgrade the run game. That's an offense that should easily be top five, if not top three this season. And if all those things can go according to plan, then you have the most dangerous team, bar none, in the NFL. Bar none in the NFL. Courtney Cronin lays out a very, very, very compelling case, a case that kind of sounds familiar. I think I've said it a couple of times. But I think the offensive line is one of the big questions. And the defensive line, we talked to our dude, dude Omar Kelly, saying they have not a lot of depth at the D-line. He's worried about that. But you got some dogs up there, man. Agba, Christian Wilkins, they can get to the quarterback. You got X, Jalen Ramsey. You got some guys, man, all over the place. Vic Fangio, Nick Chubb, Tua stays healthy. Bradley Chubb. I'm sorry, it's Bradley Chubb. Nick yeah. Chubb is... Cleveland running back. Cleveland running back. Oh, man, if we could get Nick Chubb, that'd be good. Uh, calm down. You, you son of... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> No, we don't need any more running backs. I mean, Dalvin Cook, maybe we'll get him. It's looking less and less likely because we don't know if we're going to pay him that much money. Hopefully, we lock down Christian Wilkins. Makes no sense to uh, sign anywhere right now. Yeah. Let, wait for a training camp happen. Wait for some guys to get banged up, at some, and then your ask price goes up. And even if you wait a, a week or two into the season, if it goes that far, eventually uh, someone's going to need that running back. Yeah. That's a nice little piece. But – um. I mean, everything Courtney said and uh, from ESPN is right. I mean, Dolphins, I've said this. I think Buffalo will be the third best team in the AFC East. I think the Dolphins and the Jets will be battling for the AFC East division title. And, yeah, if Tua stays healthy, I mean, there's no more knock on Tua being a quarterback anymore. We all know he is a he is a more than above average quarterback. You know, can he, the only question is, is, can he stay healthy? And in order to stay healthy, he would need his offensive line to protect him. I don't see their offensive line. They, I don't see their offensive line being that that great. Yeah, Armstead was a great signing last year, but mm -hmm. Armstead only gives you 10, 11 games. He's going to miss five games. That's a given. That's a given. Austin Jackson. Yeah, you don't know what you're gonna get with that. All right. Or, or actually, hopefully you and know what you're gonna get. <laughs> what you know, when you when to, when Tyreek was saying that uh two thousand yards, I don't think that's gonna happen because guess what? McDaniel, Coach McDaniel has said he's going to put more of an emphasis in the running game. So if you're going to put the, yeah, Tua's not going to, he's not going to, he's going to try to make sure that Tua is not, you know, standing in the pocket and taking all these hits. So if you have a formidable, formidable running game, it protects your quarterback, it kills the clock, and it leads you to more wins. So their running game can get good, could get better. Not even if the running game can get better, if they add, Dalvin Cook, yeah, that's another weapon. There's no, there's no team that has the speed that the Dolphins have. None, none, offensively. 
Like, it's ridiculous. But can the offensive line protect Tua? Can Tua remain healthy? And let's see how quickly the defense um, gel with uh, under Vic Fangio. I know Brad, I'm expecting a big season from Bradley Chubb. I am too. You know, you got the you got the bag. You know, you got the extension. You got the bag. And now you're playing with the coach that helped you get that bag. Familiarity, number two. For Absolutely. Two, re- two reasons too, Vlad. Not just familiarity. Now he's a little more accustomed playing for the Dolphins. He's got his guy, Vic Fangio. That's a lot of familiarity. I expect a big year from Bradley Chubb, of course. And, of course, Christian Wilkins, he's going to get his too. But I expect big things from him also. So, I mean, um, listen, I'm just maybe the only one who just thinks that the FC East is going to be a battle between Miami and the Jets. I think Buffalo is going to take a step down. I'm not going to say they're not. They're still not a contender, but I just feel like they might be the third best team. I don't even think they take a step down. I just think the Dolphins and the Jets have taken that much of a step up. So So um, it's nobody stepped back. It's just they stepped up. Yeah, that's listen. When you add pieces like Vic Fangio, and that, I mean, it's crazy when a defense, yes, a defensive coordinator of that magnitude is a great addition to any team. But to a contending team, a team with, I mean, look, look, you got some badasses, bro. Yeah. On both that sides secondary, of the ball. That secondary, I think the Dolphins have the best secondary in on paper in the NFL. Okay? You got... The kid from Miami, Jalen Phillips, you got Wilkins. You got guys on that defense. You got playmakers. All they need to do is have a coordinator to get to get them in the spots that they need to be to make those stops so that you can get that ball to that offense. Nobody wants to go in a shootout with the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. But if the defense is above average, if the defense is average, they're a conference championship Super Bowl contender. If the defense is above average, mm-hmm. it, yeah. Courtney Cronin's sitting there saying the They're, offense they, should be a top five, top three offense in the league. Yeah. And the defense, I'm going to say this, should be a top five defense in the league. Now, uh, I don't know about all that. There's a lot of good defenses out there. Bro. Okay. Well, you're we've, talking about San Francisco. You're talking about Philadelphia. Uh, you know. We've seen some projections that have the Green. Dolphins in the top five. Projections, right. But right. I'm, right, right. <laughs> we're going by projections. I'm, I'm also going by what I saw from the team. From right, the teams last year. Look, I'll be honest, they were and bad on defense, and last they're year. bringing back right. a lot of those top five defenses. Are bringing back the same pieces back. Yeah, but yeah, keep it a buck. They were bad on defense last year. I don't want to say they were bad. Justin Fields ate their lunch. I don't want to say they were bad because I thought towards the end of the season they were playing actually good defense. Um, and and they were they were getting turnovers. One thing, if if they were giving up points and yards, at least they were getting turnovers. Toward that Buffalo game and um that Saturday night. When the, that third quarter, that was just that that was the defense that led that um that comeback in the third quarter. Defense and special teams. So defensively, they will be better. And because of that, that's why a lot of people ex- have high expectations I do. for the Dolphins. But let's say if these projections are correct, and let's say the Dolphins have a top five defense and a top five offense, that equation is pretty simple to see that they're gonna be, if not. One of the best teams in the league, the best team in the league. Because if you're doing on both sides of the ball at that high of a level, man, there's a lot of wins in there. And you got to do it. Listen, the AFC East play a tough schedule this, it's this tough. season. So, you gotta... therefore, you're going to get tested. And, I mean, like, like we're we, going to see. We say New England, you know, is the basement of the AFC East. Still not – it's not a guaranteed W. No. Definitely Even though not. I, we, you know, we all hate New England. Yeah, we're going to make fun of Bill Belichick's over the hill. Mac Jones has a grandpa body. Still. But still, New England's New England. Belichick is still that coach, and they know how to win. Their their defense is going to be great. That's another top. That's another defense that's um, upper echelon in the the NFL. So we'll see, man. So we'll see. Projections, free agent running backs, defense, offense, coordinators, coaches. To a healthy, it's all projections. It's all talk, Vlad. That, let's get the pads on and this? let's play, man. I love the fact that if everybody's making it seem like Dalvin Cook, whoever gets Dalvin Cook, it's gonna, it's like that will push him over the edge to be, you know, the, to, the favorite. And what if the best move is not to sign a Dalvin Cook? There you go. What was it? Maybe to get a Leonard Fournette or a uh, Ezekiel Elliott. 
I wouldn't be opposed to any of those three guys, to be honest with you. Or Kareem Hunt. I wouldn't be opposed to any of those four guys. I am shocked that Kareem Hunt's not signed. I mean, with that speed, I didn't even add Kareem Hunt's a great running back, and he's a very he can do and he can do shares. He can because that's what it is. You have Mozart, you have um Jeff Wilson Jr., right? And then if you add a Dalvin Cook, where are these like how many buys are gonna get carries? That's what you want. A fresh stable of running backs. That that's can, great, but they all need they all need the ball. Raheem they all need to too. tote the handle. Raheem most of the fastest guy in the NFL, too, by the way. So speed kills. So if McDaniel wants to emphasize the running game this season, as he said throughout um a lot over the offseason, mm-hmm. then with that offensive line, is that offensive line gonna run the ball? Is that offensive mm-hmm. line gonna block? We'll see. We'll see. It's still, yeah, there's a lot of question marks. I hope they can gel. Marks. I'll say this. I think everybody eats. I think the defense shuts other teams down, gives us a lot of time of possession. I think the running game is going to be better, and that also helps the passing game. I think Tua gets those 2,000 yards, just barely. You mean T- Tariq? Did I, who did I say? Ezekiel? He said Tua. Tua? Tua is going to get 2,000 yards for sure. <laughs> Throwing. Yeah, yeah. No, I think Tyreek gets those 2,000 yards. I think the running back, you got the stable going in and out. I think Waddle's going to eat too. I think the passing game, the running game, it's going to be an explosive year. But once again, Vlad, it's all talk. Because if Tyreek has 2,000 yards, that's great. But I'm also going to look at it and like, hmm, he has 2,000 yards and Waddle's probably got like 1,500. I mean, yeah, Waddle's still going to get a right. lot too. I'm going to look at it like the running game is then they're not running the ball. No, but you get up by so much that at the end of the game, before the end of the third and the fourth quarter, you're just running the ball. Have you seen the schedule they play? I know. It's okay. a yeah, not, I don't is it the second many, hardest schedule in the NFL I don't see on paper? Many, I don't see many blowouts in um, any of the AFC on East paper? teams. Yeah. Once again, they play in the NFC East and they play in the AFC West. You're going against games. you're going against potent teams. Let's play the games. You know, let's get the games going. Let's see what happens. Let's throw it out there on the field. Let's settle it out there. That day is coming soon. Yesterday